What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Fishing with Separate episode. Today, we're at this gorgeous wild creek spot here. This creek is pretty big. There's a lot of nice holes. I don't know if you guys can see. It might be a little tricky navigating around all these holes, but worst comes to worst, we can always get back in the truck. We can drive down road a little bit, but we have a nice little spot here. We'll try out and we'll try up around these holes through here. We're not gonna go too far away from the truck because I don't want to get myself in a sticky spot. But today's goal is to catch a nice brook trout to do a catch and cook with, maybe even a couple. Brook trout don't get very big in creeks like this, so if we have to get a couple, we will. I'm not gonna keep anything under like seven, eight, eight inches probably. Um, they do stock parts of this with brook trout, but I think that's gonna be enough rambling on. We're gonna get casted out in this water and see what kind of luck we can get today. All right, we're just gonna be using the micro setup today. <clears throat> we got this gorgeous micro tube, it's the Happy Meal color. We're gonna start out in this hole right here. Probably just gonna cast right out where the water's not running too fast, see if anything comes out for it. It's a little difficult to traverse this area. Oh, we've had a little one come out after it, probably only like three inches or so. We're gonna get back out there. I wanna see if we can catch him. It's a start, you know. We're gonna try some of these little holes here too. All right, these rocks are super slippery. You gotta be very careful. Yeah, see, it's a really tricky to navigate through all this. Up by the truck, there's a spot to come down through there. We might have to go back up and then come back down. Probably would have been easier to wear my waders today, but it's a little too hot for that. Luckily, we're up in the mountains. So it's not too hot up here in the mountains, but that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down. I see a nice little hole down there. I'm not 100% sure where they stock through here. I just know that it says that they stock it. So it is crazy how slippery these rocks are. We've had uh, about two weeks of almost straight rain, which uh, hasn't made it any easier. This is a really cool rock. Oh, look at that bird's nest right there. I think there's some, I think there's little birds alive in there. That is crazy. All right, we're gonna traverse through here now. We just gotta be super careful not to slip. Oh, this looks really good right here. There's some nice deep pockets all down through here too. But right here looks great. I think we just had a nibble. Oh, 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 oh. That's a nice trout. That's a really nice trout. He came right out for it. Okay. That was a nice eating size. Ooh, we gotta be careful. We're gonna get down to somewhere that's a little bit easier to pass from. He was semi on, but he wasn't committed necessarily. We just had another one come out for it. He didn't commit though, which is a good thing. Cause I wanna get to somewhere that's a little bit easier to cast. Maybe from down here. Yeah, this is good right here. Oh, we're all tangled up though. All right. We might put some scent on there. There we go, fish on boys. That's a good fish. That's decent. Nice. All right, we're gonna wet our hand real quick. We're probably gonna keep him. This is a nice trout. Yeah, he's a pesky little guy. Yep, we're gonna keep him. This is one of them that we're gonna cook up. We're gonna bonk him out. There we go, boys. First brook trout of the day. That is not a not too bad of a brook trout for this spot. There's another one in there that I saw that was bigger than this. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get back out there. We'll see if we can get another that might be bigger. That's pretty much just insurance if we just don't catch anything out, so. I'm gonna try to get it underneath that big boulder. So just out of curiosity, I'm not seeing anything else biting right now. 
I'm gonna put some scent on here and we're gonna see if that makes any of a difference. We're just gonna throw a little bit, doesn't take much. We'll work that into the tail, kind of entice them more to bite here. All right, we're gonna take a couple casts, see if this attracts any more trout to bite. I'm not seeing nothing else. So we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna head downstream a little bit further. There's nice deep pools all down through here. But we got ourselves a nice brook trout to start out with here. This is running too fast through this pool. The next one down doesn't look too bad. This pool looks like it could have a nice trout in it. We'll set this right here. All right. See if there's anything in this hole. Down there, all right, this, this hole down here looks a lot better. So we're gonna move down a little bit further. All right, so over to the right hand side of that fast water, we got a nice pool. So <clears throat> you can cast right in that fast water if you want to. And there's no doubt you'll probably catch a fish, but I prefer to go to the side of the pools. I just seem to get better luck that way. We're gonna move to an easier spot to cast. Yeah, I think if we cast from down here, we then set our trout down again. Yeah, we're just gonna cast from right here. I can kind of see in the pool a little bit better too. Cause there might be sitting some trout sitting in between those boulders. Oh, we caught a stick. Hang on. I think we might just had a bite. I'm not sure though. The spot looks great, but I don't know. They might not have made it down to this hole yet. All right, I'm not catching anything out of this hole. So we'll keep on moving down. We'll grab our trout. Uh, if you have a trout and you're gonna keep fishing, just make sure to dunk it in some cold water every once in a while. Just to make sure that the meat doesn't go stale on you. Really wish I had my stringer with me. All right, we'll set our trout down here. This is actually a really good rock to cook on too. This spot looks perfect right here. If I had to guess, we're gonna catch something right here. Oh. We're having little ones bite at it. Nothing big though. We're gonna hit right there. I just keep having a little one bite it so I'm not really setting the hook. I would have thought that a nice big one would be hiding in here somewhere. We'll pass over in these rocks here. I don't think there's any trout in this hole. So I have to keep moving again. <laughs> gonna get a little tricky to traverse down this now just being mindful of the slippery rocks here right here there could be a fish in this hole as well I mean there's pretty much a hole everywhere I mean we just fished that one right below it here's another hole so now certain holes they might not even look like they would have a decent fish in it but that's the thing is uh just had another one go after it but anyways, that's the thing is uh, with brook trout, they'll sit anywhere where, oh, that's a nice fish, that's a nice fish. They'll sit anywhere where there's enough water for them to, to sustain life, so. There we go, that's a nice fish. We'll get him up. That's better fish. That's a way better fish. Nice. That's better than the first one. All right, we're gonna keep him as well. This is better than the first one. I just need to find a rock to knock him out with here. We'll get the hook out of him before we do so. Don't wanna ruin our hook. All right, we'll go ahead and bonk him out. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and wash both of our trout off now. We are gonna take some more casts in here. But first I wanna wash these trout off because they're all dirty now. We can just come down in this little hole here. Okay. I want to find a rock that might be better to put our trout on here. We're just going to set them right here. Nice. Look at how gorgeous this trout is. It has beautiful colors on it. But back to what I was saying before that fish uh, had bitten is that uh, these trout will sit in places that you wouldn't even think that there would be fish. And take that fish for example. It's bigger than the first one we had caught. 
yet it was in a smaller hole. So you just never know. You just got to try all the spots out. I think we just, we just have, we have another fish. Oh, we had another fish on. He snuck off of us though here. Another one bit. There is so many trout in this hole. It's actually crazy. We just gotta fix our tube here real quick. Again, if you guys are wondering what I'm using, it's just this little micro tube, Happy Meal color by Dry Creek Outfitters. If you guys uh, happen to watch Ace videos, then you should know what these tubes are. I'm a fan of Ace myself. We keep having little ones bite at it. They're not committing though. We're just gonna get further out there and I'm just gonna bring it through. We still have other holes to move down through here too, so. We're gonna have to try those out before we head out. I'm gonna take a couple more casts over into the distance there. There we go. I just keep feeling small ones biting, so we might move down to the next spot. I think we're gonna stick with our two trout though, unless we catch a really nice eating size. These ones are still really nice eating size too. But look at the difference in color between these two trout. This one has more of a golden look and this one's more of like a rainbow look to it. It's just crazy. I'm gonna take a couple more casts here before we move down. The next hole that I think we can try is down a little ways. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna try right here. I think I saw a bigger trout over this way. All right, I think we're gonna continue moving down. That's the rock. We're, we're gonna come back and we're gonna cook on that rock. I think that'll be the easiest one to cook on. I need to come up with a makeshift stringer though. I'm not sure how strong this is. Not very strong. We'll just find a piece of driftwood real quick to use as our stringer. Let's try this one out. This one's pretty fragile. This one's a little fragile, but it's perfect size. So we're gonna use it anyways. If you guys don't have a stringer on you, you don't know how to use a stick, feed it through the mouth and out through the gills, just like so. And there you go, you have yourself a makeshift stringer. All right, we're gonna move down. I'm trying to stay up a little bit higher because it's a little bit easier to tra traverse these bigger rocks. A little bit more dangerous though. If you fall off of these, you're in some serious trouble. That's why I'm being super careful. We might even do the catch and cook down here somewhere. There might be a spot that looks even better. This hole looks pretty good here. We got another nice big rock here. We're gonna keep moving down though. Yeah, we'll try casting this spot for a little bit. We got a nice big hole down there though. It's another nice catch and cook rock right here. Let's see if anything comes out to play. Yeah, that hole down there looks a little bit better. So we're gonna keep moving. We're still not too far from the truck. So we, we're pretty good still. Just wanna make sure we don't go too far. But even if we do, it's okay. Cause the road's right here. So we can just walk the road back up if we have to. I can't help but think that there might be a trout just right here in this little hole. Nothing there. Gets nice and deep on both sides here. We'll take a step down. Yeah, it's nice and deep through here. We'll try this out. I'm just gonna cast it right in this fast water and let it take it naturally. All right, I'm gonna cast it out to the middle. We'll bring it down through here. Oh. I think we had a nice fish bite us. It's just a small little guy. Yeah, there's a good couple of them sitting over here in this hole. Nothing too big from the looks of it. Yeah, I see one that's probably about six inches in here. All right, we're gonna throw a little bit more scent on. I keep seeing them come up to it, but they're not committing. Maybe if we throw some scent on, maybe that'll uh, entice them a little bit more. We'll be a little bit more generous with the scent this time. All right, we got that scent all rubbed in now. All right, let's see if they like the scent. They just had some nibbles. I didn't set the hook because it didn't seem like a very big one. We're gonna try going way over there. Oh, whoa, there's another little one. The little ones love this thing. I mean, the big ones like it too, but the little ones are just absolutely destroying it. Another little one just came running after it. <laughs> I took it away from it as quick as I could. There we go, that's a good one. There we go, there's another fish, boys. It's a little one. We'll go ahead and get down to the water so we can wet our hand. We'll let this one go. 
<sighs> just look at how squirmy the little guys are. Still just a gorgeous little trout. All right, we'll let him go. I think we might be moving down to the next spot here shortly. I think it's just a bunch of little ones through here. But we're going to keep casting and we'll, we'll figure out if it's all small ones. I'm not seeing any more down, down in that small hole. I, we're going to try in this deep spot again. Let's let it sink. Oh boy, we're in the tree. And we got it. I think we might take a break here soon just to cook up the fish. We might continue making our way down to, I don't know. We might actually do the catch and cook right here. This is a perfect rock for it. That might be what we do. We might go ahead and do that. All right, let's go ahead and set our rod here. We're gonna also set our bag here, but we'll do the cook. Actually, we might do the cook on this rod. Yeah, I think we're gonna. All right, let's go ahead and get our stove all fired up here. There we go. All right, we got our pan. Let's get some olive in it. Put our lighter away here. We might be able to fit both trout in the same pan at the same time. We just gotta make sure we're sturdy here. That's not too bad. All right, let's go ahead and get our knife. Let's start filleting these trout up. Use this as our table too. All right, we've got the head and guts all out of there. We just gotta score the kidney now. Score it right down. We'll just use this water right here to our advantage. Get all the slime coat off of there too. Wash our knife off. Just gonna put some scores in the meat real quick. We're just gonna do a couple scores in the meat. Just the little ones. This trout isn't too big, so we shouldn't need that many scores on it. Just enough to make it not curl. All right, we'll go ahead and grab our seasoning now. Now that we got one trout pretty much laid up, we can go ahead and put the pan back on the stove. So this time, we're gonna go ahead and use the lemon stepper seasoning again. So I used this in last week's episode. If you haven't watched last week's, you should watch it now, but we used this last episode and it was just been like absolutely phenomenal on trout. So let's go ahead and get it in the inside of the meat too. Be generous with it. Most of it will cook off anyways. So there we go. We have our trout all seasoned up. Let's throw that right in the oil. Oh yeah, we can definitely fit the second trout in there. So while that first one's cooking up, we'll go ahead and flay the second one. It already smells fantastic. We might have to put some more oil in it. There we go. Now we just gotta get the head off. And I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the fish in there for the little crawdads that are up in there. We'll grab our fork out. We gotta flip these trout. Yeah, look at how much it's already curling. But we also, I mean, fresh trout always does this, so. We definitely need some more oil in the pan though. We'll be generous and give the pan quite a bit of oil here. There we go. We gave it quite a bit more oil. We're about to have that other fish in there anyways. So let's go ahead and finish our other fish here. Score the kidney. We'll get all that gunk out of there. We're not gonna score this one because this one's so small. We're just gonna put it right in the pan as is. Let's we'll season it up. Make sure to get it on the inside as always. All right, there we go. Let's get that fish in there. I probably should have put these both in at the same time, because that other one is almost done. That's all right, we're just gonna make sure that uh, this other one might even break apart <clears throat> before this other one even finishes. Yeah, it's gonna break apart. Maybe we'll just help it, I don't know. This other trout's not gonna take long. The other one's a little burnt, but that's all right. But the other one will be done shortly anyways. So once this other one finishes, we'll go ahead and eat. We'll clean up our bag and everything. And then we'll go ahead and try fishing a little bit more, but we'll fish on our way back up. It's a little too tricky to get back down the rest of the way. So let's go ahead and finish this one up. All right, we'll let that finish. While we do that, we'll clean our knife up. We'll get that back in the bag. Let's clean as we go kind of thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that oil off. This should be pretty close to done. We'll give this one a little flip again. That other trout's gonna be a little crispy. But we have that off, so while that cools down, let's take a couple more casts. 
We'll go down there, we'll cast a little bit more. Let that cool down. Let's see if we gave these trout enough time. Oh yeah, look at the, our guts are down there and stuff. I wonder if that's gonna creep them out at all. Huh. All right, we just broke off. So what I'm gonna actually do, I'm gonna tie on a different color tube to fish on our way back up. And we'll see if a different tube color will get more luck than the one we already used. Let's try, we're gonna try something a little bit more natural since the water is really clear here today. We're gonna go with the mocha stone. Just look at how good that looks. Oh, we actually haven't opened this pack yet. So we have not tried this tube. Now I'm actually excited to see how this tube does because I've never used one before. Which means we gotta get rigging one up here. And I'll show you guys how I rig my tubes. I have another pack of these hooks somewhere because I know I'm running low. But for the size tube I'm using here, I use 132 ounce ball jig heads. And the reason I use jig heads instead of just a regular hook is because I like to take my jig head and I like to just slide it right up the body here. It can be a little tricky sometimes, but it's not too, too hard. You just keep sliding it up. Once you get it to a point where you can kind of poke it through here, you just help guide it with your nail. You can just kind of poke a hole through, okay, just like so. Poke a hole through, slide it down the rest of the way. And you got a lovely rigged tube with some weight to it. That way uh, it doesn't just float on the surface. These trout would bite right on the surface anyways, but sometimes that's not the case. Looks like our trout is almost done cooling down too. So we'll give this tube, we'll give this tube a couple casts down here. And then we'll come back up here. We'll eat real quick. And then we'll move our way back up to the truck and fish while on our way back up. All right, there we go. All right, we got that tube all rigged up. Now let's see if these fish will bite this new color. I just saw a small one go after it. Oh, we just had another small one take it. All right, I'm gonna cast out past. There we go. I know that there was some trout over that way too. All right, I'm just seeing a bunch of small ones come nibble at it. So we're gonna go ahead and head back over here and we're gonna eat our lunch before we continue on fishing. We even have a nice seat here to actually uh, sit and enjoy our meal. I really do enjoy this spot. I had to drive probably about 25-ish minutes to get here. So it was a little bit of a drive, but it was definitely worth it 100%. All right, first bite, the brook trout. Ooh, all right, that's really good. So like I said, I used this seasoning in last week's episode. And I gotta say that it's even better on brook trout. Most of you probably already know that brook trout is definitely by far the tastiest trout and uh just adding this seasoning along with that it's just phenomenal oh man i wonder if we can just get the bones right out of here look at this right off the bone right off the bone we'll give that to the little crowd as they're in there and now we just have our boneless but well, mostly boneless you'll always have some thin bones in there but look at that bite oh man that was a good bite it was so much bigger that is so good since we're here i want to go ahead and thank you all again the amount of support on this channel just within the past couple months has been phenomenal and I can't thank you all enough. The growth wouldn't be possible without all of you. So for anyone who is new here, we always invite you to join a part of our family over here at Fishing with Sepper. And I always invite you just to drop a like, comment what you love about these videos and just make sure to subscribe and turn that noti bell on. We upload every Sunday. Sometimes it's on a Saturday or Monday, depending on how I feel, but it's usually every Sunday. But anyways, I just want to thank you all again. And to anyone who's new, we always invite you to be a part of the family you got going over here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish eating this. And when we cut to the next scene, 
we'll be back to fishing and we'll be on our way back up to the truck. All right, guys, we'll catch you then. All right, we're going to be making our way back up now. We're just going to fish all of the same holes that we have already fished. I'm going to start out with here. I don't think I caught anything out of this hole. So we'll go ahead and give it another try. Now, it's really hard for me to see this bait in the water. But it's not going to be like that for uh, the trout. So the trout should be able to see this no problem. We just have to go off of uh, feeling the tugs instead of seeing them come for it. Because with that Happy Meal color, I could just see the trout come up for it. I could just sight fish them. With this color though, it kind of blends in with the water. So it'll be a little bit more tricky. But we're gonna go ahead and make our way up over here. I think right here is where we caught the bigger of the, tr the two trout. So we'll definitely take another cast there. We'll see if maybe there's another bigger, another big trout there. All right. See what kind of luck we can get. Oh, oh, we just had another small one. Literally right as it hit the water. I'm gonna come down on these rocks here. I don't think we're gonna get anything out of this hole. This hole's not that big. I think we're gonna get more luck up in the holes that look really good but that we didn't catch anything out of because uh, this bait might actually attract them more than the happy meal color we had yeah this looks pretty good we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hop over to this rock all right yeah this looks so good right here we didn't catch anything out of this hole oh another small one man there's just so many small ones here oh see i <laughs> There was a small one that went for it again, but I didn't even see it, even though the water is so clear. They blend in so well here. All right, I don't think we're gonna get any more luck here. We're gonna keep moving up towards the truck and see if maybe our luck can change. It's crazy how big these boulders are. All right, I know that we caught one of the good trout right here in this hole as well. And this hole looks really, really good, so. There's no doubt in my mind that I think we can get another pretty decent trout out of this hole. The rocks are a little bit more slippery up here though. I want to get up on this rock. I think this is going to be the last hole that we try, maybe. Because it might be easier to get up there to get to the truck. But we might hit that hole up there again. Oh. Okay. I think we got hit by a decent one over by that rock. And then we had a smaller one come after it too. We had another one hit us in this water. Oh, okay. I think we had another one on and I just keep missing them. All right, we're gonna move back up to another hole. I decided I'm just gonna go back up the same way I came because uh, I'd like to finish off this episode catching a trout. So we'll definitely finish off catching a trout no matter even if I have to walk upstream some from where I park. We will finish off with catching another trout. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I don't think we fished this spot. We're going to try it out. All right, I don't think there's anything in that hole. We'll just keep moving. All right, guys, that concludes another episode of Fishing with Sepper. If you guys enjoyed this week's episode and you'd like to see me do more episodes just like this, out in the wild catching brook trout and catching them and cooking them, then make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe so that I know that you guys want more of these videos. But anyways, thank you guys so much for coming with me today on this episode. We had a blast, and we'll catch you next Sunday on next week's episode. All right, guys, Fishing with Sepper, peace out. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another Fishing with Sepper episode today. We're at this gorgeous damn spot. No real good way to get down off the steep kind of bankment that I'm at here. Um, the water is pretty high, which is why I can't really get down there. I had to kind of stay up here to fish. So I don't think we're gonna use the micro rod today. I haven't necessarily decided, but what we're really gonna be using today is I got a new spoon that I'm trying out. It's by the same people to make the fold, but this one's just kind of a simple silver spinner. 
So I think that's enough rambling on. I want to get casted out in this water. I think we're going to have good luck here today, boys. Alrighty, so we got a nice big black rod here. We're using six pound test. So if we catch a fish here, we shouldn't have a problem bringing it all the way up this bank. It's a little tricky with a spinner. I might jig it a little bit, but I think I'm gonna try to get it close to those rocks or even try to get it close to that running water as, I, as close as I can. Being way up here makes it a little bit tricky. I wish I could honestly get to the other side, but I don't think that's gonna happen here today. So when I'm getting it closer to me, I'm kind of jigging it a little bit. We're gonna, gotta, we're gonna try to get closer to those rocks. Gotta be careful of snags here. I might try to, there's like a little trail right here. I think we're gonna take that and take a walk down. It's just too tricky to cast from this high up with what I wanna use here at the spot. So I've never been here before. So we're just gonna see where this trail leads us. It looks pretty good all down through here. Uh, see, it's pretty deep right through here. I think that if uh, we didn't get as much rain as we did where I live, I think we'd be able to get right down in there. But you see how predominant these uh, trails are here? I think this spot is pretty heavily fished. We're gonna go down right here. There is some pretty deep water right here we can cast into, not as deep as further up. But we still have that deep pocket right in the middle there. This tree is kind of in the way. Ooh. I think I might actually walk right up here over on these rocks. This looks pretty good through here. I don't know if I can climb over this or not. I wish all this wasn't here. We do have a little bit of rocks here, but it doesn't look like it's too easy to cast from. So I can just get these branches out of the way. It's not too bad. We're gonna set this rod up here. We'll take a couple casts. I wish these trees weren't here. Actually, I wonder how deep it is. I might be able to walk out to this rock here or even that sandbar with my boots. We're gonna try, but I'm being super careful. Woo, we're getting pretty close. There we go. This is a pretty good spot. So I think they're gonna be sitting right here. It looks pretty deep out there. I'd like to get to the sandbar. I'm just gonna take a couple more casts where I'm at now though. I'm just gonna cast right in there. There we go, we pretty much cleared the other side there. Oh, almost got snagged. I think if there's any decent fish, it's gonna be right up on that other side. The tricky part is I don't want to uh, get water in my boots. And I'm not sure if this is like quicksand or if this is, uh, it's I mean, it's pretty sturdy. Just gotta be careful, I don't wanna get in no quicksand here. That's not bad, all right. I think we're good here, boys. Probably should have brought our other rod with us. That's all right, though. <clears throat> Even though this spot looks really good, I'm not seeing a single follow. I'm not seeing anything of the sort. Very little activity here. If we have to, I'll keep walking down this trail until we find somewhere that maybe we'll have better luck at, but I don't know. This spot is starting to kind of seem like a dud. Where it looks really good, that is, but it's just not much activity here. I'm gonna take a couple more casts all around here. If we don't get any more luck, then uh, we might go further down, see if maybe there's a deep pocket <clears throat> that we can uh, fish. Well, looks like we broke off, boys. Time to tie on something different. <clears throat> so I do have this rainbow trout color spoon by the same company. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try this out. I'm just gonna tie this one straight onto my line. 
I've actually had more luck that way, so we'll do it just like that. And since we snagged the other one and we're tying on a different color, I'm gonna give it a couple more casts here. And we're gonna see if maybe the color will uh, make the trout more active, if there is any trout at this spot. Which I'm almost certain of it that there is. I just don't know if they're sitting further over where uh, on the side of that fast water or if they're further downstream or not, I have no clue. I'm gonna take a couple casts right here. We'll cast a couple times down, downstream. And that's where we'll call it if we don't get any luck. That was a horrible cast. All right, we're gonna get our backpack back on. I'm gonna make some casts down through here real quick. And we'll walk down a little ways. We'll see if there's any uh, good looking spots down there. If not, then uh, we're gonna go ahead and head to another spot that I wanna try. All right. Let's get driving to the next spot. Right, guys we made it to the new spot this spot is very hard to get to I thought I would have been the only one to come fish this spot but there's a trail which means that someone else has already come here but it looks fantastic so I'm not gonna waste any time I'm gonna try to find a good spot to cast and we're gonna get out in this water All right. I don't think anyone goes down there it looks like someone might have they're brave if they did so. So it is possible that some fish swam up in here too. I've fished this river before all the way up and I haven't had any luck, but they stalk this river down through. So there is a chance that some fish did swim up this way. I'd like to kind of cast down that way, but there's not really a bank to cast from here. It's really tricky as it is. But I am going to stand right here. It looks like when the water goes down, you, there's like a beach area that could be down there. But right now as it is. But we only got it. I thought for sure that we just lost our spoon. It looks like we were alright. It looks better out in between those two islands. We got a fish on. We got a fish on, boys. There we go. That's an all right fish. Ooh, that's a nice rainbow. We're gonna loosen the drag up for him. We're gonna tire him out. All right, and the flip. Oh no. There we go, boys. Oh my God, that's a nice trout. Oh my goodness, boys. There we go. What a nice brown trout. Nice, all right, we're gonna keep this trout. We're gonna do a catch and cook here. I got a new seasoning that I wanna try. We're gonna leave him here for a second. I gotta try to find something in my bag that we can kind of bonk him out. There we go, boys. We got him all knocked out. That is one nice brown trout. Absolutely gorgeous. We're just gonna leave him up on the bank here for a second. We're gonna take a couple more cast out there. See if we can get any more luck. Yeah, this spot is really good here, boys. Now with that trout, I don't think he was stocked this year. I think that was stocked probably last year. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get back out to that spot. See if we can, uh, see, if, see if there's maybe another trout. So that was kind of right out in the middle there. I think she thought I was waving to her, but that's not really what was happening there, lady. Right there is where we were. We'll see if we can get another trout right there. From all the way up here, that looked like a rainbow trout, but it was not. All right, that's perfect. That's where we want to be. All right, I'm gonna try to cast out to the left here. I'm curious if anything's gonna be in this deep hole. All right, we're right back out in the money spot over there. I let it sit for a little bit. We're gonna slow retrieve again. 
I think I need to kind of stay more out towards the right. Perfect. I think that's where we want to be. I'm going to come over here because it looks deeper right through this hole. All right, we're going to let that sink for a bit. All right, guys, I'm going to do a couple more casts. Oh, 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 we just got nibbled. We're going to do a couple more casts and then we're going to call it a day. I don't want this fish sitting out here for too much longer. There's not a good spot for us to uh, catch and cook here. And I'm parked up at uh, Tractor Supply. So there's not really an easy way for me to catch and cook anywhere. So I think I might take this trout home. And I think we're going to do a catch and cook on the Blackstone. I'm noticing too when I get nibbles, it's out towards the left. So we're going to try to get back out towards the left. I'd like to catch one more fish. Perfect. That's where we want to be, I think. I think I was a little bit too far to the left. It looks a little shallow. I think it's a very specific point where these fish are sitting. Right there. And this is going to be the last cast of the day. And the last cast of the day is perfectly where we want to be. Alright, I lied. I'm going to take a couple more casts. I'm just going to try right in front of me for a little bit. And maybe take a couple more casts up above me. I'm just curious if anything's sitting in here. I couldn't imagine there being brown trout and rainbow trout in here and them not swimming up. At least a little ways. And it's deep and it has some pretty good rocks up there. Alright boys, we're calling it there. We can't say we didn't get lucky. We are leaving here with a trout, so we cannot complain. I think what I might do, I think instead of uh, going home and cooking on the Blackstone, I think we are going to go just find somewhere nice to park by the river or something, and we'll just do a catch and cook there. But I'm gonna make my journey back to the truck and we will catch you at our cooking spot. All right, we are back. So I decided to come to a different spot on the river to do this cook. We have this beautiful ledge here behind me. And uh, it's just a lot of ledge where we can kind of set up and we can cook. And I also decided to do this because while this cooks, I can also fish here. And we can see if we can get any other luck here. I don't really want to end the episode with just one fish, but if we have to, we will. So. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get the catch and cook stuff all set up. And we're gonna go ahead and fish while it cooks. All right, so based off of where I'm gonna be cooking and where I'll be fishing, it's a little too hard to hop back and forth. So I'm just gonna fish for a little bit and then I'll start cooking. Cause I don't really wanna have to do both at the same time. I just feel like that's not gonna work out very well. So we're just gonna take a couple casts. If it doesn't work, we'll just jump right to the catch and cook. The spot looks a little bit more murky since last time I was here. Oh, guys, we just had a really nice trout follow us all the way in. I watched him swim right over here. I think that trout that followed us over here, I think that was a rainbow trout, if I'm not mistaken. When we had that one follow in, I just let that sink. And then I retrieved it from up. I'm going to let that sink for just a bit. While that sinks, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna get our pan heated up with our oil. Just give that oil enough time to really get all prepped up. All right, so we got our oil all in the pan. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go reel that in. If we don't get a fish on this, then we're gonna go ahead and start gutting our fish up. And we'll start cooking. All right, one last quick cast. We're not gonna let this one sink. We're gonna have to come back to this spot. I think the easiest spot for me to do this is gonna be over here. <sighs> we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna gut it out before we wash it off. Let's go ahead and take the head right off. I probably should have bled this trout out. It is a pretty good sized trout. <sighs> I'm gonna set our head over here real quick. I'm going to take that home for my pups. <laughs> now let's get all the guts out of here. We have some roe. So this was a female trout. I wish it wasn't a female. I like to leave the females if I can because uh, 
this helps the population even more. They do stock this river, so I'm not too worried about it. But if I have the option to take a male trout or a female, I will any day. Let's go ahead and get all this gunk out of here. We're making the crawdads happy today. We got all the insides out. I'm gonna do one last clean, get all the slime coat off. I'm just gonna do that over here real quick. It's a little bit easier to wash things out over here. I just heard, a, oh yeah, so there's a rise over there. So we are gonna cut this trout in half because it is too big for our pan. So, We'll probably cut right behind the fin here. It'd probably be easier just to cut this on our backpack. Right. Let's tear it the rest of the way. Wow, look at how gorgeous that meat is. Nice orange meat. We'll cut ourselves some slit in here so that this does not curl up on us. My knife needs a good sharpening. All right, let's get some more oil in the pan. The rest of our oil spilt out, so. I probably should have picked a better surface than this, but we're going to be monitoring it from now on in anyways. I'm going to go ahead and grab our seasoning here. We're going to season the, we're going to season this trout up nice and good. We'll get some on the inside here. We'll go ahead and pat that in. And this is the lemon stepper seasoning. So every time I do a catch and cook, I'm going to be trying to use a new seasoning. I won't be able to do it every single time, but. I'm gonna try to, that is. But this rock is really slippery. We gotta be careful that we don't uh, lose our trout there. <laughs> now we're gonna go ahead and put one slit in each side of our back piece of meat here. Right. Season this bad boy up too. Try to get the inside there. Try to get that in some of that oil too. What was that? What? I think that's a beaver over there, guys. What in the world? I thought someone. I thought someone straight up threw a rock in the water. That was crazy. My God. All right, we're gonna go ahead and clean our knife. Start packing our bag a little bit here while that cooks. Here's, we're gonna see the beaver come out again. <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. Ooh, that trout smells really good. Okay. Let's get our fork out, get ready to flip this trout. Oh, that meat just looks gorgeous. Look at how delicious that meat's looking. Some of this nice stove again, huh? Yeah. Yep, so if you see over there on the top of the water, there's a beaver hanging out. It's always so hard to tell where I live because there is huge trout in this river that do jump out and just make absolute huge slams like that. So it's a little tricky to tell sometimes. We're gonna go ahead and turn this off now. We'll let that cool and sit in the pan. That seems pretty sturdy right there. So while that cools off and finishes cooking on that side, now we'll take some more cast. This should have been my game plan from the start. It'll be pretty cool if we can catch a trout right before we eat one. I'm not sure where that beaver went. I know that beaver can hold their breath for a very long time, so. I'm hoping the beaver doesn't come eat our lure thinking it's a fit. What we'll do too is once we hear that stop sizzling, and we'll go grab it and start eating. I am starting to get really hungry. It's around dinner time, sun's going, starting to go down. So we're gonna eat here pretty soon. 
since the fish rose over there, I'm gonna cast right out in this calm water. See that bubbling in the water too? I wonder what that bubbling is. If any of you have any clue what that bubbling is, let me know down in the comments because I've seen that before, but I just have not a clue what that could be. All right, we'll do one more cast after this. That's not sizzling anymore, so it should be cooled down pretty good by now. All right, guys, last cast of the day. See if we can get any luck on the last cast. I wish we would have had that trout bite that followed us right over here, but can't catch them all. It's called fishing and not catching for a reason. All right, I am starving. Let's go ahead and grab our pan and our fork. Let's test to see how this trout came out with that new seasoning. Alrighty, before I dig into this trout, I want to go ahead and thank you guys so much for the support on my recent videos. The growth on this channel has been absolutely insane recently. And I just can't thank all of you enough because all this growth wouldn't be possible without you. So if you guys are new, please make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Just comment anything that you like about these videos. Um, it just really helps inspire me to keep doing these and keep advancing these videos to keep making them look absolutely amazing for all of you. And uh, that's enough rambling on. We're going to take a bite of this fish. And we're going to see how it came out. We had to do a quick change to the GoPro battery. <clears throat> but we are all set now. That first bite of the trout was absolutely fantastic. The flavoring of this seasoning is absolutely delectable. You can really taste the lemon in the seasoning, which if, I'm sure most of you already know. That lemon on trout, or lemon on any fish for that matter, is just so delicious. So. I definitely recommend that if you guys are going to cook some fish, 100% get this seasoning because it just tastes delicious. I think the part I like most about this seasoning is that it doesn't overpower the flavor of the trout. It just kind of helps assist it. It just gives it that little bit extra that pushes the trout really over the edge of tasting fantastic. So. I think if I was to rate this versus the other seasonings that we've used on this channel, I would definitely rate this one number one so far. Alrighty, I'm gonna finish eating up this trout, but I think this is a good time to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much if you guys have stuck around to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it so much. And like I said, if you guys wanna see more content just like this, please make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you guys turn on the noti bell so you guys get notified every single Sunday when I upload. We upload every single Sunday. Just don't miss it. Just keep an eye out every Sunday. Notification bell. It'll let you know exactly when I upload. But that's where we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. And we'll catch you next Sunday. Alright, peace guys. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Fishing With Separate episode. Today, we're at this ledge spot here. We just got hit heavy with a storm yesterday. So the water is super high. It's pretty murky too. Um, that's why I decided not to try to fly fish this spot today. We're gonna stick strictly with like uh, spinners and phobes of such uh, nature. And we're gonna try to cast out, see if maybe we can get some life out of this murky water. Um, if we can catch something today, we are going to do a catch and cook. That's if we can catch something. But uh, the water is running really fast through here. So what I think I'm going to do is, I've been here before, so I kind of know where the ledge goes. Um, I know some fish like to sit out to the left here, but what I'm going to do, is I'm probably going to pass up and try to reel it in through this fast water. And I bet you there's some nice sized trout sitting in this fast water here. But that's enough for him to run on. I'm gonna get you guys on the hat and we're gonna cast out in here and see if we can get any luck. There we go, boys, fish on. That's another nice brown. Woo, we got a jumper. There's a nice bite, a beautiful brown trout. All 
All right, so usually I start with the micro rod, but today we're gonna start out with the big rod because uh, with heavy rain like this, there could be some bigger trout that have moved, moved downstream with the fast water. So I got the bigger phobe tied on here. It's just a gold phobe. And I actually have some like weird cotton stuff on here from a couple weeks ago when I was fishing. So we're just gonna pick that right off like that. But I think what I'm gonna try to do is I might try to get out on these rocks right here in front of me. That way I can cast this out a little bit further, but I'm gonna cast straight out and kind of let it sink maybe a little bit. Cause I don't know how deep these trout will be sitting. I know for sure that there's trout at this spot. I'm just not sure how well they're gonna be able to see this phobe and this murky water. That's why I went with kind of a gold phobe. I might just jig it a little bit. I don't want to bring it too fast because uh, these, tri these trout might have a hard time biting something that they can't really see that easily. If you guys can see here, there maybe is like two feet of visibility. So if a trout can, if it can kind of get it close to a trout, they should want to bite it. Especially after a good rainstorm like we just had. All right, we're way out there. We'll let it sink a little bit. I was kind of jigging it, but I might give it like a slow retrieve. It's gonna run really slow across that water. stand over here I'm just gonna cast across this fast water now I was kind of casting it upstream I'm just gonna cast it straight across this fast water and just reel it across real slow yeah it's pretty hard to see this in the water I might try the micro rod in a little bit because the micro rod has the silver and blue so maybe if we can get some color up in this water something might be able to see it a little bit easier Right, let's try out the microfold here. We'll see if this uh, this silver and blue can get some life out of the water. I mean, this water is just super murky right now. All right, I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna cast right on the left side of this fast water. It's kind of calm through here. And with looking at how fast this current is, I don't know if you guys can see the cyclones in the water, but that's going to make it pretty tricky for a fish to be in there. So they could be just hanging out to the side. <clears throat> All right, we're going to take a couple more casts here. And if we don't get any luck, we're going to go try a spot that uh, we've done two episodes on. Just because I know that there's a, a good amount of fish in that spot. I mean, there's a couple of good fish in here. But uh, not enough to like, with how big it is in here. I mean, it's just really hard to pinpoint where exactly they would be. So we might have to try to go to the other spot. I'm going to give it a couple casts up over here. We're going to go upstream to the other spot that we've been to before. We're gonna see if maybe we can get luck up there because uh, it's just really murky and running pretty fast here. And I don't think there's that many fish just sitting in here right now. So we're gonna take a little drive and we'll see what kind of luck we can get. All right, we made it to the other spot. So I was gonna go over on that side because usually when the water is not this high, there's a nice island over there that you can kind of stand on. But when I was walking over on the bridge here, I saw that that spot is all flooded out. So our best chance is to come over here where this big rock is and try to catch a fish over here. And I'm curious, I might take a couple casts up here. Now, if we catch a fish up in this area, we can't keep it because that's part of dog. Either that or above that kind of dam is. But I want to take a couple casts see if maybe there's some trout in here there might be a couple browns or maybe some uh, brookies sitting right up here in this water the water up here in this river versus down here is a lot clearer 
Oh, we got a fish on. That's a fish on, boys. Guys, I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, that's a decent fish, boys. Oh, that's a beautiful brown trout. Look at that brown trout, boys. There we go, boys. He's a slippery guy. <laughs> oh, there he goes. All right. Well, he might have knocked himself out. Oh, we're good. <laughs> that guy was a very lively. Yeah, we couldn't keep him anyways, I don't think, because this part of the river here, I think, is still considered part of this river. I don't think it's until down there that is considered the other water body. And there's the actual poster stating the regulations. So the only thing we can use here is artificial, and we have to catch and release at this spot. Funny thing is, I was only reeling for a couple seconds when that fish was on. And he's kind of sitting way over there. Now, there is brown trout up in that river, but it is possible that that brown trout swam up while this river was high. But to be honest, I was not expecting that good of a trout to be sitting right up in there like that. But I have noticed that brown trout seem to love the phobe a lot more than rainbow trout do. Which is kind of funny. You don't think there'd be a preference between trout. You would think that they'd just all be eating the same kind of thing. But it doesn't really seem that way. That was a really nice trout though. Once we start casting down that way, I'm kind of hoping that we can catch one. So we can do a catch and cook. I'm gonna take a couple more casts. All right, I think we're gonna start moving down. I'd like to catch a trout for the catch and cook. And I'm hoping that's not the only trout we catch today. The hard part is I don't know if there's really an easy way to get over. But right down there, I can kind of cast there. But right down there is where we can keep a trout. So we'll just cast from up here. And I bet you they're sitting right in that hole. There has to be a couple at least. All right, well, first cast with the big rod. We got stuck in the tree. So looks like we're going back to the micro, which we had a bite on the micro already. So we might as well just keep using it. But I just gotta be super careful of how I'm casting. All right, I think I'm gonna try to make my way up on the bank here. I'm not sure how soupy this mud is. Oh, it's not that bad, okay. All right, yeah, we can make our way up in this bushy area. There we go, yeah, this is great. Okay, this is perfect, guys. This is plenty enough to cast from here. And I think we can definitely get a trout out in this body of water. See if we can get us a trout for a catching cook here, boys. So I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but this, you can see where the mud is meeting the clear water from the other river. And I can't help but wonder if the trout are sitting along that, that stretch. Cause I'd almost think that the trout would be sitting in that clear water. I am gonna try to take, what in the world? Did I just catch some fishing line? All right, folks, we got tangled up a little bit. So I had to retie, but it wouldn't hurt to retie anyways because that other trout was pretty decent. So definitely didn't hurt to uh, get it all retied on. I kind of like how it's kind of clear on this side, but I don't know, we could get a pretty decent fish by getting out there in that deep stuff. <clears throat> there could be trout just sitting out there, but it is also possible that they're sitting right here in this clear stuff. Uh, that's a pretty good cast. We cleared pretty far over there. So this is all pretty clear through here. So we might have a good chance. <clears throat> all right, we're gonna try out in the big river again. The current's running pretty fast. The visibility isn't too horrible in that murky water. So I might just try to get it way out there and just let it sink. I really don't want to have to end the day with just having that one trout from up there. I'd really like to get another trout if I have it down here. It's, it really does stink too that that one, well it's like maybe 40 feet, that one 40 foot stretch 
is the difference between being able to keep a trout or not. All right, so I decided to give down here a little break. We're gonna head back upstream and see if maybe we can get some more luck down here. Which again, sadly, we can't keep nothing that we catch down this way. But it'll still be fun to, you know, catch some fish down this way, even if we can't keep them. I really do feel like they're just sitting right up in there. So I see like a deep hole. And I see if I can cast right out to it. So right there is some pretty fast water. But where I'm talking about is right about where I'm pointing. It's deep through there, and the water is not as strong. Right there, that's where we want to be. And I'm just going to bring it right across. Oh, I think we might have just gotten nibbled, I don't know. Yep. There was like three trout right here that followed it in. Yeah, we're right back out where we want to be. I think there's a lot more fish in here than I thought. Oh, that's a good spot to be. I'd like to try it kind of up where it's calm there too. So I wonder if there's any fish just hanging out up there. This looks great right through here. Make sure that we don't spook any trout. Right over there is super deep. I'm gonna take a few casts up here too. It's usually shallow up here, but with all this rain, it uh, kind of flooded it out. I'm not seeing any follows up here, guys, yeah, so we might be out of luck when it comes to up here, that is. We're gonna head back down this way. I don't think there's anything up here. I think our best luck it's just right here underneath this kind of dam right here. You know, and I could be wrong too. I very, I mean, it could be that I could keep fish after the dam. That's a really good chance too. I might read the paper that's over here on the regulations to see if that might be the case. Because it very well could be. Uh, the rag's way up there. I might just check it on the way out. But we're going to take some casts down here. Didn't get any more bites down that way. I'm just going to read this right here. Dang. Alright guys, I just read the regulations. It looks like we could have kept that trout that we first caught. Dang, that stinks. All right, well, we'll cast back out. We'll try again, man. All right, so pretty much what the sign said is that anywhere from the bottom, from the edge of this bridge all the way upstream to another dam is where the regulations are. So that one fish that we had caught that was at the edge of this bridge we could have actually caught and didn't catch and cook. So, <clears throat> I might try to catch another trout from in this, haul, this hole, now that I know that. Because there very well could be some more there. And I could try a different bait. We could also try back down there again. But we're limited on time. I don't know if you guys can see all the rain clouds coming. So we're kind of limited on how much time left we have fishing. So I'll give it a couple more casts here. We'll see if we can catch anything where we caught that other brown at. And if we can't, we'll try down there a little bit longer. If we don't have any luck, we might have to call it. Cause it's gonna start raining soon. All right, so we got our jerk bait all tied on. Now I think if we can get it pretty far over there, we will just kind of drag it through the water.
There you go, boys. Fish on. That's another fish on, boys. Now we're talking business. Oh, that's another nice brown. Oh, we got a jumper. Let's get him on the bank. Nice. <laughs> there we go, boys. It's another nice, beautiful brown trout. We're going to get him up on the bank. We're going to be keeping him. <sighs> we need to get something just to bonk him out real quick. <laughs> All right, guys. We got ourselves a rock. We're just going to give him a nice little bonk. We're going to put him out of his misery. All right, guys. Here we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wash him off real quick. There we go, boys. A beautiful brown trout. There's definitely some good meat on him. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the knife out. We're going to start filleting. And I think we're going to do a catch and cook since the weather cleared up on us a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and use this rock as our cutting board. <clears throat> so with this trout, I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to take the head right on off of them. the butthole straight up and we're gonna finish taking the head right off all right there's our head and if you guys are new to my channel then you don't know yet that uh, I like to take the heads home for my dogs and I like to freeze them throw that out there for the crawdads I'm gonna go ahead and score right down the kidney. We're gonna go wash this blood out. All right, there we have it. We have the head off. We got all the nasty gunk out of the stomach area. All the guts and garbage out of there. Now we do have some pretty nice pink meat. It's definitely not too bad. I might give it just one more wash to get the slime coat off. And then we're gonna get the stove all fired up and get the pan nice and hot. All right, I'm gonna set the trout right here on my bag. Let's go ahead and get the stove all set up. All right, so I need a nice flat spot cook this trout. Alright guys, so I decided to move the catch and cook up to the truck. There was another guy fishing down there and I didn't want to disturb him and his piece by, you know, talking and cooking fish, you know, so... I decided to come up here. We got a bike path right here, so it's not a big worry. Plus, it also started to rain. So, I wanted to be able to get somewhere where I could pack up quickly if I needed to. Get the stove all kicked on. Let's go ahead and get our pan out. I got a little bit of sand in there from being down by the water. But that's no big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and get some oil in this pan just to start getting it hot. And then while that oil is getting hot, we're gonna put some scores and we're gonna season our fish. Make sure this oil is nicely and nice and spread around here. So our fish isn't going to quite fit in the pan, guys, so we're going to go ahead 
And we're just gonna cut it in two pieces. Like so. We're also gonna make sure to score our fish. That way it doesn't curl. We got some scores on our fish. Now this is a brand new seasoning that I had just gotten not long ago. And I'm really excited to see how it tastes on fish. Our oil is nice and heated up right now. Be generous on the seasoning. Pat it down, make sure it gets on those creases. Make sure to get it on the inside of the meat too. Oh yeah, you hear that oil crackling? This piece is going to take longer to cook, so we're going to go ahead and get that right in the oil. We'll go ahead and start seasoning up our tail piece. Make sure to get it nice and packed in. If you guys are wondering what this spice is called, it's the Kansas City Barbecue Rub. Salt, pepper, and mustard seed. I haven't tried this seasoning on any meat yet before, so it should be interesting to see how it tastes. Trying to be careful not to get in the way of any bikers that are coming by too this is kind of strange too because i'm kind of a i'm a pretty reserved guy so kind of being out in the public eye doing this is kind of a little strange for me so if at any point i'm a little awkward during this just know that's because i'm pretty self-reserved so i don't really like to be out there that much Ooh, look at that fish we're going to throw a little bit more seasoning on that puppy, at least on this side. I want to get it down in that meat a little bit more. This fish is looking fantastic though. Throw a bit more seasoning on this side as well. Now that the meat's kind of spreading apart, I can kind of get it in those in those cuts that we made. For a second, I thought I was worried. I thought I left my black rod down there. Luckily, we didn't. So I'm pretty surprised that the bikers that went through here didn't say anything because there's a lot of sensitive people in my state. So I wouldn't be surprised if they lost it that I was. Uh, catching and killing and cooking fish but we're out in public we're on a public bike path so even though it says no motor vehicles you don't want to go in motor vehicles that way hmm. but we're good right here this is kind of like a parking spot let me make sure to keep flipping our fish here this fish is looking fantastic make sure to get the oil spread around the pan again What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to put our seasoning back in the bag. Our oil is already back in there. While that finishes cooking too, I'm going to put the rods away. Try flipping it again just to make sure we're not burning one side. Alright, we're going to keep it in that it's nice grease for now. We're going to move it in there. Alright, while that cools down, we're going to take care of our bag and our poles. Alrighty, so we're on the driver's side. The pan's still a little bit hot, but we're gonna start eating anyways. Just look at how good this fish looks. Man, that just looks absolutely fantastic. So I think I'm actually just gonna set you guys. Let's set you right there for now. This pan is super hot, so I'm trying to figure out how to eat this without absolutely burning the living daylights out of myself. We got a little fin on here I want to peel off. Ooh. That seasoning is actually really good. I thought this seasoning would be like a little bit spicy, but it's not spicy at all. It has like a really nice sweet to it, which actually ties in really great with the fish. Because uh, this brown trout, had some pretty sweet pink meat. So it actually ties in really good together. Mm. 
Wow. I'm actually really impressed with this. This fish tastes fantastic. As usual, you always got the pin bones. That's just what comes with eating trout like this. And you're always gonna have the pin bones. I mean, look at that bite. There's pin bones everywhere in this. That's right, they're just, they're coming right out like it's nothing, so. We're just gonna peel these bones right out. There's a nice bite, a beautiful brown trout. That seasoning is absolutely phenomenal. If you guys enjoy fishing, and you've never done a catch and cook before, just get out there and do it, guys. I mean, the stuff for a catch and cook is so cheap. I mean, I got that stove. I think I paid like $25 for it. And then you just get those little propane tanks. You can get like two for seven bucks. They're so cheap. And then uh, all you really need to get from there is just get yourself a pan, get some seasoning. You can do butter or olive oil. I use olive oil just because it's easier to carry around like that. So, but anyways, like I was saying, just get out there and try it. It doesn't hurt just to try it out. And if you've never had trout before, you definitely gotta try it out because trout is absolutely delicious. There's so much flavor on that skin, especially with all the seasoning, but so much flavor. All right, guys, I'm gonna keep eating this trout. I just wanna thank you guys so much. If you guys have made it to the end of this video, um, if you guys do like these videos and you want to see more catch and cooks just like this, please make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. I really do appreciate you guys watching and sticking through this whole video. And I want to thank all of you for supporting this channel. We just hit 100 subs on this channel and we hit it so fast, so I can't thank you all enough for that. But thank you guys for joining me today on this adventure. This catch and cook was absolutely phenomenal. I wasn't sure if we were gonna catch fish today with the first spot, but we went to the second spot and we got it done. So anyways, thanks again for watching guys. I'm gonna finish this trout off and we'll catch you in the next episode. Fishing with Sepper, we'll catch you next Sunday. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Fishing with Sepper video. Today, we are fishing this ginormous river here. We have the possibility of catching brook, brown, and rainbow trout. They just stalked this last week, so there should be a good chance we catch a trout here. This hole right through here is super deep. So, I think we're gonna have some luck here today. We have our catch and cook stuff in the bag, so we're gonna be doing a catch and cook to catch something. There's a limit of two here at this spot but it's really deep through here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get tied on and we're gonna cast out and see what kind of luck we can get. Turn these trout in one up. There's a fish on boys, fish on boys. So let's go ahead, let's take that off. Just look at how amazing that trout looks. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. I mean, it's just falling right off the tip. All right, so usually at a river like this, I start with a spinner, but today, we're gonna be doing some power bait. We're just gonna make a little trout nugget for these trout through here. I'm not gonna do nothing too big, but since the water isn't the clearest, I wanna make something that they can smell. And it's really deep through here and I'm not sure how exactly deep it is. And I really don't wanna guess, but <clears throat> we're gonna do it without a bobber to start out with. And if we can't indicate when we're getting hit or not, we'll switch over to a bobber. But we're just gonna start out with two split shots. Put this little nugget on this hook. And form it into a ball like so. Just put it right on your hook. And they do stalk trophy trout through here as well. So we do have a possibility of catching a trophy trout. All right, first cast of the day. Let's get right on out there. That wind is blowing today. It is cold as well. The water is carrying this pretty quick as well. I think I'm gonna put a bobber on. I wanna be able to cast further out. All right, so I'm just gonna guess for depth. I'll put it right up on here. Man, I should have brought a jacket. That or a sweatshirt or something. I mean, it is cold. It doesn't help that the sun is covered by clouds right now. 
That'd give us a little bit more heat. Ah, uh, there's that sun. Man, you can get in a better spot to cast this out. Reel that back in. I think we might have lost our bait. Yeah, we did. All right, we're just gonna go to the power bait original. They already have the nuggets formed on here, so. We'll see if the original does us any good. Oh my God, the wind is just taking every cast. It's just ridiculous. If we lose this power bait, I think I'm gonna try to find a worm. This bank looks like there's plenty of worms in it, so. We'll see if they want the power bait, and then if not, we'll switch over to a worm. Alrighty, so I decided to tie on a MEPS. Because the MEPS will get down there deeper. I'm going to let it sink kind of in the middle before slow retrieving it in. If that sun stays out, we should get a little bit of extra action in the water too. Only thing is I can't cast it very far, sadly. But if the trout are just sitting deep, then hopefully they'll see this. Oh, I just saw trout. Oh, there's multiple. There's multiple, multiple trout that I just saw go after that. Oh my god. Okay. All right. I think we're gonna have luck with this here. I just saw multiple trout go after it. I, I saw legit three trout. They came right up to the bank. So I need to get back casted where I was. Let it sink again. We're gonna do the same thing. I think this is gonna be what's gonna help us out here, boys. Right, let's do this again. Slow retrieving. Gotta kind of cast it up because the water, when it's sinking, is just kind of taking it down. I can't believe that. I literally saw them come right up to the bank. We're gonna keep casting this this maps for a while, and if we don't get any luck with the maps, we'll switch to a rooster tail. Because it could be something slight as in colorway that could deter these trout from one up. There's fish on, boys. Fish on, boys. There we go. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Get them up on the bank. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. There we go. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful trout. Nice, okay. What a beautiful rainbow trout. Let's go ahead. Let's get him unhooked. We're gonna bonk him out first. I wanna put him out of his misery before anything else. Go ahead and let's give him a little bonk. Got that all off. Let's go ahead. Let's wash him off so we can take a better look at him here. There we go, guys. What a beautiful rainbow trout. Perfect eating size. I'm assuming I'm assuming this is a fresh stock. But what an absolute beautiful trout. I would say that this is probably about 13 inches or so. You can see the damage on the fins most likely from being stocked so what a beautiful trout guys we're gonna go ahead we're gonna gut this out now and then we're gonna continue fishing but we're gonna cook this right up by the truck we got our stove with us man what a beautiful trout all righty we got our knife all we're gonna do to clean this trout up let me try to get somewhere that's a little bit easier by the water here so what we're gonna do, you wanna cut in through the anus. Be careful not to cut any of the guts. Let's go ahead, let's get down by the water. I need to, actually, this is right up here. We're gonna use this as our little table to take care of this trout. Right. So you wanna make sure your knife isn't going in too far to not cut the stomach contents there we go fillet all the way up just like so i like to go just right behind the fin here for this size trout cut straight down through just cut straight down through there we're just gonna flip him over just to finish the cut let's finish getting the head off so with the head with a trout this size i like to take these home to my dogs and freeze them up and they love those as a treat 
So we're gonna wash this off. We're gonna bring that with us up to the truck when we go to catch this fish up. Let's wash that off real quick, get all that dirt and stuff off. And then what I do guys, I just throw it right in there just for the wildlife to eat it up. There's plenty of crawdads in here. And then all you wanna do is just take your fingernail and just get the kidney right out of there. Into the water, we'll wash this trout out real quick. All right, there we go. We have ourselves a trout ready to eat. The mink, the meat is actually not too white. It has a little bit of pink to it, which isn't bad for being a stock trout. But what a beautiful trout. We'll go ahead, we'll set this over by our bag. We're gonna fish a little bit longer. Hopes that maybe we can get another trout. But we have a trout to eat for lunch, which is amazing. It's so cool to come out here and just catch your own food. It just kind of brings us back to our roots. Let's go ahead, let's get back out there. I know there's a bunch more trout in here because I saw a bunch of them come up and take this earlier. So let's hope that maybe we can get a second. We can keep two trout out of here. So we can be picky of which one we want to choose next. Surprisingly enough, when he bit that, he actually bit it pretty close to the shore. It wasn't like it was out in that deep part, really. It could also be that he followed it in for quite a ways. All right, so what we're gonna do, I casted there a couple of times and we might've disturbed the water through there, but I'm gonna cast kind of down a little bit. Try a different spot. On that cast, I really didn't let it sink down much. So I'm gonna let this one sink. I think that's the only way these trout were able to see it was that I was letting it sink. They got a glimpse and they were kind of just following it in. All right, we're gonna head back over to this side. I'm gonna go to the edge of this bank over where this dead turkey is. One thing I wish, I wish that sun would come back up. We might take a break from fishing just to go, you know, cook that trout up just while the sun is gone. Cause I think the sun also helped us in catching these trout as well. All right, we're gonna take a, a quick break from fishing. I think we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna go cook up our trout, have ourselves a little lunch, and then we'll come back and see if we can get any more luck. Maybe something to take home. But I'm going to clean my knife off real quick so we can score this trout before we put it in the pan. But let's pack our bag up. Let's get up there. Let's cook this trout. Alrighty, so we got our cooked stuff all set up. I noticed that the fish was a little bit too big for my pan. So we're going to have to cut it in half. But we got everything to have ourselves a great lunch here right by the riverside. And once we're done eating, we're going to go take a couple more casts. See if we can get a little bit more luck. But let's go ahead, let's cook this trout up. So what we're gonna do is I'm probably gonna cut the meat in half, probably around here. I'm just gonna cut right down the back. Let's see right through the bones. There we go, we got ourselves two lovely pieces of trout. Let's go ahead, let's fire up our stove. There we go guys, our stove, all fired up. Let's get ourselves some oil in the pan. Brand new bottle of extra virgin olive oil. Put some of that oil right in that pan. We're gonna let that oil heat up a bit and while that's heating up, we'll score our trout and get some seasoning up on there. Let's get our oil moving around here first. Oh yeah, that's doing great. All right, so I'm just gonna put a couple scores on the meat. This helps us so it doesn't curl. And what we're gonna do, we got our Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse Seasoning. So we're, not, we're gonna be pretty generous with this here. We're gonna pretty much coat this trout. Get some on the inside. And the other side is our first filet. 
Pat it down on there. Test our heat. I think we're almost about ready to throw this on. Right, let's go ahead and throw this first fillet in. Oh yeah, our oil is definitely ready. Let's go ahead and get this other one. I'll coat it up with our seasoning. Get some on that tail too. The tail is actually really delicious too when you cook it up and it gets nice and crispy, just like a potato chip. Make sure to get that oil around there. We don't want our fish to stick. Oh yeah, this is awesome guys. You can't ask for a better day, honestly. Other than the wind and the sun going away, what a beautiful day out. We got a lovely trout right on the riverside, We're cooking it up right out in nature. Look at how beautiful that meat is too. It's absolutely gorgeous. This trout smells so good. I'm actually so hungry right now. Just look at how golden brown that skin is as well. We just gotta make sure that we don't burn that. Meat looks like it's gonna be done here pretty soon. This tailpiece one will definitely be done before the rest of it. We might need a little bit more oil in there. What we're gonna do too, when this is done cooking, we're just gonna go back down to the river and we're just gonna eat it right by the river. We'll give the bones back to nature. I think our tail piece is just about done. Our big piece still has a little bit longer to go. So I'm just gonna keep this part right out of the oil and let the big piece cook in that oil for just a little bit longer. We're just gonna pick up after ourselves here. Get everything else situated back in our bag. So let's go ahead, let's take that off. Cut our stove off here. Now we just gotta let our true out cool down. All right, we made it back down to the riverfront here. We got our trout. Just look at how amazing that trout looks. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. I mean, it's just falling right off the bone. It might still be a little hot, but I just can't resist any longer. Oh man. That is actually really good trout. And good crisp on that skin too. I mean, the bones are just falling right off the meat. And that seasoning is actually really good on trout too. I've been using that seasoning for a while on just like chicken and stuff. But there was a picture of a fish on there. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take that out with me for the catch and cook. And we'll see how good it is. We definitely have to come back to this spot. I mean, I saw a lot of trout in here and we still have a probability of catching another one. You know, when we come down here after eating, finish eating this trout. But I definitely saw a couple more. I had some follow uh, the MEPS Rainbow Trout Spinner. If you guys haven't used one of those, I definitely recommend it for water that's just like this, where it's really deep. And that's what we did. We just let it sink and then we slow retrieved it back. And that's how we caught this guy here. But we're definitely going to come back to this spot. There's a bunch of other spots along this river. This is the biggest river that we have in my state. So there's plenty of spots that we can go to on this river and where we can just catch absolutely beautiful trout. So if any of you are wondering how we find spots like this, what I do, I just go right on Google Maps and I do the terrain setting and I just kind of look for any water body that flows anywhere. And what I do is I just follow the roads that go right along the riverfront and I just look for, sometimes I just look for pull-offs or I look for somewhere where I could pull off. And then what I do is when I'm driving by these areas, <clears throat> I'll just stop by and I'll just drive by these spots, check it out and make sure it's somewhere that we could actually go to. And I've been scouting this spot out for quite a while. And uh, today's the first time I'm fishing it. And we got lucky. So, I mean, definitely a spot we have to keep on our radar. There is trophy trout in this river and there's a lot of them brown trout rainbow trout so i mean we definitely got to come back try to catch a trophy but for now let's just enjoy this trout i'm gonna finish eating it and when i'm done we're gonna cast back out and fish but i'll catch you guys then
think fishing is all done for today. Sadly, we only caught one, but it was still a great time out here. The wind was working against us, but we still prevailed. But what a great time still. All right, we are back at the truck. I wanted to film the outro in here because the wind was picking up even more outside. So I wanted to have good audio in here. But I want to thank you guys for staying to the end of the video. If you guys did enjoy and you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And please make sure to share as well, guys. But anyways, this is Fishing with Sepper. We'll catch you next week. Let's see if maybe we can get some more luck. Oh, there's a fish on. Another fish. <laughs> Yeah, that's another brown trout. All right. So there is brown trout number two. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another Fishing with Separate video. Today, we're at this gorgeous spot with all this ledge. We got this little bit of falls over here. I really wish I would have worn my waders, but I had to walk the bike path to get to this spot. And I'm not the most in shape you guys have seen from my other videos. So we just got our boots on, but there is some good spots out here that I can see. Where I think there's gonna be some fish. I did see some state trucks around here, some state stocking trucks. They're parked right up at the parking ride, kind of near this spot. So. It's either down there at that spot that they stocked or it was up here at this spot. So we're gonna try up top first and we're gonna make our way down. We're gonna see what kind of luck we can get. We got both rods, we have the lightweight rod and we have just our regular spinning combo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find a good spot to cast out here, which I think is gonna be down here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you guys on my hat We'll see what kind of luck we can get today, boys. All right, so I'm gonna go up over these rocks. Right over here, it looks like a spot where I could kind of get across these rocks into the middle there. Because if I can get out into the middle of that rock over there, I think we're gonna be able to get some luck. So we're gonna slide down this, step on this big rock here. We're gonna be super careful. I don't wanna slip or go in over my boots. We're gonna make our way over here. We might get a little close to getting over the boots. These rocks are super slippery. I gotta be super careful. Make sure to always test your footing before you move your, your next foot. All right, now we're at the good part of the stones where we can kind of get across a little faster here. I wish I could get over to that rock there. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna start out with the ultralight rod. It looks shallow through here, but your eyes can really deceive you. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try casting just straight out there first. We gotta be careful of snags. Dang, I really wanna cast out there. I might come over and get on this rock. I just gotta be careful not to get in over my boots. Yeah, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think they probably stopped down there. We'll take a couple more casts here. But I think we're gonna make our way back down. Worst comes to worst as well. There's a nice hole down past that bridge down there where fish usually gather up because it's probably one of the deepest spots on this stretch of river. So it's a pretty good spot to fish. The water is super clear through here, so I can see pretty well everything except for up top of the river. So I'm pretty certain of it that there's no fish up here at least, but I wanted to come test it out beforehand. Yeah, I'm not getting no follows or nothing. So what we're gonna do, death defying journey back across this water <clears throat> and back up that steep rock, which will be fun. But we're gonna make our way down to those other rocks over there. But when I saw those stocking trucks, guys, it was, uh, it was probably around like 12. It is possible that those fish move down river very fast. They usually try to hang out in the same spot for a good little while. All right, there we go. We made our way back across. The hard part's gonna be getting up this rock. This is not gonna be too easy. 
go ahead and set our rods up there. We might have to make our way up and then back down. I don't think this is gonna work out for us very well. Unless I just go right over top of this and break all this bamboo and crap. Okay, well. We made our way back across. Not so easily though. Our rods are all tangled up. That was quite the, quite the adventure right there, boys. There's water shallow up right here where I can kind of avoid getting in the dangerous part. It looks pretty deep through here as well. Maybe I'll try to take a few casts with uh, my rooster tail, which can kind of get out a little bit fat further. So we're going to give that a try real quick. We're just going to keep moving our way down and try to get to that spot where I think they stopped. All right, guys, we made it to the other hole. It's quite a hike to get here. I'm like drenched in sweat, but it's the things you'll do to catch the monsters, right? So we got our micro set up. It's really deep through here. There's got to be something. So water is super clear. We're going to go ahead. We're going to cast it out, see if we can get luck here. We're gonna let that sink for a little bit. See if something's sitting a little deeper, just sitting in that fast water. Alrighty. We got a fish on, boys. There we go, fish on. Let's get him up on the bank. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. There we go, boys. Nice. We got a beautiful brown trout. We are gonna keep this trout. All right, there we go, guys. What a beautiful brown trout. He's absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get him on a stringer or on a stick at least. All right, so I found this vine. I can't seem to find my stringer. I think I might have left it at home. So we're just gonna use this vine as our homemade stringer today. Just feed it through the gills and out the mouth. It's through the gills, out the mouth. We got ourselves a little homemade stringer here, boys. Just gonna make sure that it uh, doesn't break and float away on us or something. I just want to keep this guy in the water while we continue fishing. So surprisingly enough, we caught that guy on the micro setup. And uh, I wasn't sure if fishing with the micro setup at this big river would work or not. I'm assuming you guys heard how much drag was going on. I had the drag super loose, but I had that just because this is four pound test. And I wanted to make sure that uh, Whatever fish we got wouldn't break it. The first fish of the day, I wasn't sure if we were gonna get lucky today or not, but turns out we were able to pull through. So to catch that fish, all I did was cast way out, try to get to the other side. The water's kind of running in the middle and it's kind of flowing over these rocks. And all I was doing was kind of jigging it through that fast water. And that's when he hit it. So I'm assuming that there's probably a good amount of fish just hanging out over there. I'm kind of surprised we caught a brownie, to be honest with you. I thought that maybe we would have caught a rainbow or something. But I have no complaints because I love brown trout. Brown trout's my favorite meat for sure. It's just super sweet. It always ends up turning up pretty, pretty pink. So it's just too bad we didn't have our catch and cook stuff here today. Well, we have everything else, it's not our pan which is a shame. 
that's all right. Hopefully we can catch some more fish. We'll just finish off the day with some good old fishing. We still have probably another hour and a half, two hours of sunlight. So we got plenty of time. Let's keep on fishing, see what we can get. I can't remember if I let it sit or not. I feel like I did, but I'm not 100% sure. We haven't tried our rooster tail at this spot yet either. I'm seeing a lot of flies kind of around the surface right now. So maybe that white rooster tail would do pretty good. Just kind of skim it right. Oh, we got a fish on boys. We got a fish on another fish on. This is a better fish. That is a better fish. Let's see if it's another brown or if it's a rainbow. This looks like another brown. I think it is. No, this might be a rainbow. What is this? Get it up on the bank. Yeah, that's another brown trout. All right. This thing has more spots on it than the other one. Let's try to get this bait out of its mouth. We might need our pliers for this one. Oh, no, there we go, we got it. The hooks are just super small on this bait. Just let us get it out there, guy. Come on. There he goes, he shook it out. So there is brown trout number two. Look at how pronounced those red spots are on this guy. But we're not gonna keep him. We already got one trout. We're gonna let this guy go. There he goes. He's... <laughs> He just went right in the water and he's just kind of hanging out by the rock. Let's wash our hands on it. brown trout number two of the day. That is crazy. I would have thought that we would have had more rainbow trout than brown trout today. He's still just hanging out by this rock. I kind of want to shoo him out. I don't want the water level to drop and him get stuck in here. Come on. Come on. Go. Go. There he goes. I wanted to get him back out into the main water because uh, especially right around this spot in like probably like a couple days, this spot here will completely be all rock. There won't be any water right here. So I wanted to get him out of there so he doesn't get trapped because this hole is kind of trapped in. So we got him back out. <laughs> That's awesome, guys two brown trout like almost back to back they're just like sitting in this hole over here kind of in the middle right where i'm pointing i'm just kind of jigging it and uh they're just hitting it on the jig i'm not even really reeling it in which you could do with a foe but i'm just kind of jigging it apparently brown trout really love this rainbow trout phobe they just want to slay their competitor, Rainbow Trout, so I shouldn't be surprised. Well, let's see if we can get a third fish on the day. I mean, we already got our trout that we want to eat. So the only way I'll probably keep a second one is if it's probably like a little bit bigger. Maybe around, I don't know, 15, 16 inches, then maybe I'll keep another one. But I haven't decided yet. I'm kind of glad I kept that first trout though, because uh, the first trout was looked a little bit fattier than the second one. So even though it was about the same length, we want some chunk to give us that extra bit of meat. What I'd like to try to do before we head on out of here is I'd like to try to catch a rainbow trout or maybe even a trophy on the micro rod. That'd be hilarious. There is trophies in here. I mean, I've caught in some 24 inch rainbow and 20, 24 inch brown trout out of here. So if we caught one of those on the micro rod, that would just be absolutely elite fishing. Cause this is just four pound test on a 
tiny Shakespeare rod. And then I just got this sh Shimano reel on here. Which I do gotta sh uh, I do gotta say, this Shimano reel, I actually, I absolutely love. So I think after a while, I might even replace the reel on my black rod with a Shimano reel because so far I've had no complaints with this reel. It's been absolutely amazing for every fish I've caught so far, so no complaints. All right, let's try to get it out in the foam. So far we've caught two out of that same hole there. At this point, those fish are probably overwhelmed. So I need to try to cast over to the left more, but I also see some foam forming on the left side of the current that's going downstream. So there could be some nice fish in there too. Let's kind of do the same thing. We'll just keep jigging it. And see if maybe we can get some more luck. Oh, there's a fish on. Another fish. <laughs> I was just, <laughs> there's another fish on. Seems like another pretty decent fish. He's coming towards it. That's another brown trout. I am so confused. Usually this spot is full of rainbows, but today we're just slamming the browns. There he goes, he shook it free. So there's another brown, guys. It's absolutely beautiful. Let's get him right back in the water. He's about the same size as the others. Let me go release him over here in the bigger part of the river there. Three brown trout. <laughs> I'm just, I'm pleasantly surprised, not gonna lie, because I love brown trout. I'm just surprised that we haven't caught a rainbow yet. I mean, I'm usually catching rainbows out of here mostly. But again, I think it's all in the lure. I mean, I just think that they really love this lure. If you guys are wondering what I'm using right now, this is what it looks like. It's not the big foam either. This is a pretty small one. That's why I have it hooked on to the micro rod because the micro rod can kind of cast lighter baits a little bit further, especially with the four pound line. We are just crushing the brown trout. I mean, I mean, it's not very far in between casts either. I mean, I cast out maybe three or four times and then they're just hitting it again. I mean, it's, they just can't resist. Oh yeah, that's a perfect cast. That's right where we want it. We'll let that sink a little bit. I feel like we could get another one on this cast, no joke. See if we can get a fourth trout on the day. We're right back in that current, right where we want to be. See what kind of see what kind of action we can get here so we're going to take a couple more casts and if we don't get any more luck we're going to go ahead we're going to gut our fish out and then i might take a couple casts up there up above the bridge you can't keep anything up there but if you're using artificial lures you can fish up there all you want catch and release and i'm curious if maybe we can catch some brook trout up there I know that there's also some brown trout up there, but I don't think there's rainbow up there. I think rainbow's just all throughout this river. So we'll keep giving it a couple more casts, see if we can get any more luck. If not, then we will call it a day. All right, guys, I think this is going to be the last cast of the day, and then we're going to gut this trout out and make our way out of here but last cast let's see what happens all right so we got our knife out we're just gonna go ahead we're gonna clean this trout up real quick before we head on out of here so if you guys haven't watched my previous videos and you don't know how i 
I'd like to clean out my trout. So what I like to do, I'm just gonna use the ground of my cutting board. And you just go right in through the butt hole. You go right all the way up until the head. Now I'm gonna leave the head on because I like to give those to my dogs. So then what you do once you got all the way up, stick your knife, you'll see two lines underneath the jaw. You wanna stick your knife right through, cut right up, finish that cut off. And then what you wanna do, you wanna go in through that hole, grab the rest of it with your other hand, and you can just rip all this stuff right on out of it. So there's all the guts and the gills. We'll throw that in there for the crawdads. All right, then what you want to do, you want to take your knife, you want to score that kidney. Score it all the way up top. And then you just want to take your fingernail and you want to push all that gunk out of there. Look at how pink that meat is too. I'm pretty sure this is freshly stocked this year. And it's crazy how pink this meat is, if it is a stocky just from this year. But it is possible that this is stocked from last year and it was a pretty chubby trout. So it is possible that it was stocked last year. But I'm pretty confident that this is a this year stocked trout. There you go. You guys have a head on, all gutted out trout, ready to cook. But now that that's all done, we can put our knife away. We can go ahead and we can pack up and start hiking on out of here. Alrighty, before we hike on up to the truck, I want to take a minute just to do the outro here. I want to thank all the real ones who stayed all the way through the video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. If you want more videos like this, please make sure to tell me in the comments. But anyways, guys, this is Fishing with Sepper. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. But we'll catch you next week on another Sunday. Alright, peace, guys. What is going on guys welcome back to another fishing with separate episode today we're doing a little bit of morning fishing i got my brother-in-law my niece and nephew here again with me this time around i'm at a spot where i caught like three brown trout before they're fishing over behind me but i'm going to cross over where it's shallow here i got my waders on so i'm going to try to see if we can't get any luck I got this foam on in my micro setup. Right, so now that we're across the river, I'm gonna put you guys on the hat. I'm gonna cast out so we're kind of lucky we can get. There we go, another fish on. There it is, look, look, look. There he is, <laughs> slammed him. There's another one too. Yeah, another one came up to it. See, so right on the swing there. In the summertime, this spot's even more money. All this is like, that deep so all this water leaves we got a fish on hello oh, that's a, a little tyke huh a little baby brown it's a little baby brown Oh no, not one this small. It's a little microphobe. So remember what I caught that rainbow on last time? This one's a small one. Same thing? Yep, this one's uh, silver and blue. Yeah. I got a bunch of these things too if you want to hook one up. You see right here, Bella? It's a deep hole, like eight foot deep. I've seen a lot of fish in here too. Should be able to get it pretty close. There we go, another fish on. Ooh, we got a jumper. It's better, it's a lot better. 
It's a decent brown. Squirmy little guy. There we go, guys. Brown number two of the day. So fast, too. The first one was really small, if you guys could see. This one's a lot better size. But well, we're gonna let him go. So I'm right back in the main body. That's crazy. Two fish that fast. Almost back to back. Hang on, I can't hear you yet. Yeah, yeah, it was a brown trout. Spots loaded with brown trout. Whew. Got you some waders finally, huh? Yeah, I got these bad boys last year. Oh, you did? Yeah. I only use them from time to time. They're super nice to have though. I know yeah. that for sure. Here, Paul, keep that in your bag if you want to switch to it. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll give it a try. I caught three on that bad boy on Tuesday or whenever really? I was here. They love that thing for some reason. It's so bright. Mm -hmm, they love it. Oh yeah, I, these things I've started using them this year and I was like, these things are money. I was like, I need to, I literally. Have like a whole collection and sizes and everything. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I've got like probably eight in here right now. Oh, that's awesome. But you got to try over that side. If you wanted to get over there, I mean, it's, it's rather shallow, but you could just go up walk across the bridge and then right by that house is a path that goes down can i get well there used to be a like a plank that went across there for people to cross it washed away when the water picked up he's gonna try over this side with me it's really dangerous going through there bella you might want to stay over here so you see where that water is running in right there yeah. kind of where it stops waving cast right in there there's fish all in that hole Dode saw probably 50 in that one hole last year. All right. I can stay over here with them if you want to go over. Yeah. That's what I got tied on right now. Yep, blue, silver, and. Black, like a bluish, black, white. For a tube? Yeah. Oh, you just hook onto a hook. Um, let me look at my tackle real quick. What maybe I have for you here. No, I already got some in the freezer, so just catching and releasing now until I do another catching cup. Try this bad boy out, Anthony. You want me to tie it for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty awesome, ain't it? This is a good spot. This is one of Dode's favorites. Have you filmed a video with it at this spot? Yeah, there's uh, one coming out this Sunday at this spot. Oh, cool. I caught three of them here. This one's out next Sunday? Or? This one, uh, it'll either go out next Sunday or maybe in a couple weeks to try to spread them out at different spots. With that one there, Anthony, when you cast it out, Give it about six seconds. Let it sink a little bit, then slow retreat. And you should hopefully get some bites like that. A good spot to cast it. There you go. Caught a bait. Right here. Caught yeah, I'm thinking about there. Guess what? I caught a bait. There's probably a fish on that lure, and you caught the lure with the fish on it. Here, let me see that lure. I'll break it off. And I... No, I'm gonna keep that for a minute. There you go, Bella. No, thank you. Yeah. Yep, it's pretty deep right on through here. It's a little muddy though. All right guys, so I left the micro set up over there with my brother-in-law across river. So I don't have a food pet on here, but I have a rooster tail. But I'm gonna switch over real quick. Ah, oh, damn. What do you have tied on now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Fish on, there we go. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a good fish. No, no. 
That looked pretty big. How, how big you think? Like, <laughs> I hate when I blank like that. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Where do you see flies? Oh, it rise up. It's almost like a canal. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Yep, so over to your left, you'll see it drop down and uh, they, they just sit right around that point. Just hundreds of them all year round. <laughs> yeah, so over to your right, probably 15, 20 feet. That's where that gully starts. Maybe a little bit further, like 20, 25 feet. A little bit. I'd be lying if I said I haven't ate it on it before. Fine. I'd be lying if I said I haven't eaten it on there before. <laughs> The beach of sand is. Wouldn't be a fishing trip without me eating it. <laughs> I think so. I think you should be good. Bike paths right there, but I think they wouldn't mind a free show. <laughs> a grower, not a shower. Oh, I just saw a fish jump right out of the water. Right at that sandy beach. It's pretty easy to get over there too. Yeah, everyone left from out here, so we have free range to go wherever we want. Yep. Straight out from you from there, that's where it's deep and it goes into that gully. Yeah. Oh, right over by you? Ah. I gotta move out on these rocks a little bit then. Yeah, they're hanging out there. Get that coolness before the sun comes. That was me. Huh? There's another one. I can actually reach out there, so I'm gonna try to get him. See what happens here. Oh, not gonna reach him like that. Oh, coming down. Huh. Still, you gotta knock that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a good one. Seeing a bunch of rises. They're all, it's crazy. They're all along the bank. Uh, all right. Oh, tons of them. There's enough room for all of us anywhere along that side. Yeah, I love this spot over here. Oh, it's beautiful. It's money. But I got, I'm gonna have to get the fly over there because it's like that's that's where they're rising, man. It's Can in the shade before them? before the sun peaks too far over. Pop, it shuts I love down. watching you and fly fish because it's so cool watching you like. Oh, huh? Uh, uh, you can try, honey. Go right over where Doge was. Don't go on the left. Anthony, why don't you guys start heading over? Yeah, Dodes has to cross real quick. Go grab his bag and stuff. Yeah. What else is over there, Anthony? Oh, it's a bunch of stuff. Uh, yeah, I can't carry that all in one go. Here, I got the camera rolling. I got to get this on here. I wish I would have been, been recording that. We'll get it. So see, oh, you, have no, to, you have to wear it down. Because the, the thing is, Pop, can I have the, head? the leader that I'm using is only six pounds. Don't move it. Yeah, just reflex. It's okay. That's a now see, I always keep my line tight and I try and keep my rod tip low to the ground. So if he comes real close to me, I can lift up my rod because he'll shake loose. Start catching 18 and 20. Just wait. Don't don't force it because he'll pull. As soon as he sees that net, Anthony, yep. he's going to want to run. Put it in. Put it in the water. Quickly. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Now, Let's get that bad boy on camera real quick. Yeah. Oh, that's a beauty. It's a nice one. That's a nice trout. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. 
All right, bring them, bring them over. Beauty. Georgia. Huh? Do it. Do it up. I watched him come right into the sun for that. Did you see it? It's pretty that, awesome. That was crazy. He's, Doe's is hammering, you're like fishing, and I'm hitting the heads with the rock, and no, and then, and then Anthony is, you know, up. There it is, look, look, look. There he oh, is. No. <laughs> Slammed him, there's another one too. Yeah, another one came up to it. See, so right on the swing there. Pop, you're gonna be Richard's Ooh. <laughs> Oh, funny how they come right, you know, see them? That was crazy. Like they track it, so the kid, but they want to see what it's going to do first. And right. That thing, and coming up out of the water, hammer time. That was crazy. What in the world? See, you, won't, you won't catch Oh, 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 oh. I just had him follow right up. Did you? Yeah. You want to keep the big ones. Yeah, I just had him follow again. Oh, oh, I can't, can't release them all. No, that's the hard part. I just watched. <laughs> right, what? Oh, boy, I keep having them follow me over here. Why? Well, I, I watched it grab me twice. Oh, no kidding. And uh, it spit it out before I could hook that. You see that jump right over here? I'm gonna start heading down water here. Holy, there's so many freaking browns right here. Oh yeah, and then I just watch one jump. You see the wake still going? Oh yeah. Cast it right down there. You'll you'll catch them for sure. Right. Yeah, I got it on video. That was awesome, huh? Trout Slayer sixty nine. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh really? Dang. Huh. I'm watching them follow me all the way to the bank, and there's a lack of commitment. I'm gonna use the big dog to see if they're a little bit more anxious. Yeah. Yes, they are. <laughs> It'll do that. You, you miss them? Oh. Oh, yeah. This spot is surrounded by browns right now. I'm watching them follow right up on the bank. We'll see if we can get hit real quick. Ooh. I got it. Huh? You wanna try up here? Uh, it's okay. I'm going to switch up. They keep following, but they're not committing. It's a, it's a bait problem right now. I might tie on a Joe's fly, see what's happening with that. Smaller fly, so something, sm oh, okay. Ah, uh, I'm not sure. Right. Right. Well, I think my Joe's fly might be too big then, I don't know. Oh yeah, that's way too big. I might just do a rooster tail. That one right there, like, that's on this one. It looks like a shark, a mini shark. <laughs> What's the difference between a Joe's fly and a Bob's fly? Bob's fly? Oh, I thought there was a Joe's fly and a Bob's fly. No, uh, not that I know of. Joe's here. Huh? The old ones you used to have to, but the new ones you don't. A little kid's one. Oh. Oh man, there's two of them right there. There we go, fish on. That should be okay. That is a decent, decent trout. That's a good one. Alright. Do you need one? Let's get any pliers. That's a good fish. Why do they all have red spots? It's because it's just the brown trout color. Yeah, it'll be alright. Alright. Have you caught a fish yet, Anthony? Not yet. Here, come try this out. Oh, it helped if I wasn't. Still on it. Yeah, just release those pliers real quick. There we go. Here, let's run this through here real quick. Okay. So I've noticed. Cast upstream. Yep. Slow retrieve, about this fast, okay. okay? Just cast right up top. Constant reel, too. Oh, you got a couple follows. No, Anthony did. Yeah, just keep casting upstream as far as you can and then just reel it right in. Ah, 
That's a good fish. Keeping that? Now I just lipped them, so I'm gonna throw them right back. Look how beautiful that brown trout is, guys. What a gorgeous trout. We're just gonna get them right back in the water. A lot of trout's already been caught today. We'll let that one run free. Well, that concludes another episode of Fishing with Sepper. I hope you guys enjoyed this absolute trout slam that we had going here. The brown trout were just going crazy over on this side. Started out over on the other side of the spot earlier today. We saw them rising over here, so we came on over to this spot. But they were just crazy over here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching all of that fishing. If you guys did, make sure to drop a like, comment, subscribe, and share. But anyways, we'll catch you guys on the next week episode on a Sunday. Always keep yourself posted. All right, catch you next time.